Hi, we spoke about membrane performance and efficiency in our previous video. Now let's discuss the benefits of the inline TDS meters installed on your units and how to use them to judge the performance of your system. We utilize the HM Digital DM1. These meters are installed in key points of the system where TDS values are important, especially to reef aquarium hobbyists where success is partially dependent on the purity of the water used for topping off or for making fresh salt water. These meters are dual probe, meaning they measure TDS in the water at two given points. We currently offer two systems to the hobbyist featuring these meters, the CSBDI and the MaxCap. The CSBDI has one meter, two probes that measures two points, and the MaxCap has two meters, four probes that give you four points of measurements. Quick note on the MaxCap, since it's not shipped with the meters installed, the harness that connects to the probe closest to the DI cartridge should plug into the meter on the right. But what exactly are these points? These points are the locations within the system where the probes are installed into the stream of water where they're able to measure the TDS. I should point out here that the in and out markings on the meter are arbitrary because the probes can be installed wherever you need them. So try not to think of them in the context of say into your system and out of your system, rather think of them as positions. The switch is simply the selector allowing us to read the value of those positions from either probe. Looking closer at the CSPDI, the probes are installed just after the water exits the membrane, which happens to be the in position, and just after the DI cartridge, which happens to be the out position. Notice the probes themselves are also marked in and out, corresponding to the switch positions. Now the benefit of these two points is that we're able to monitor how much TDS goes to the DI cartridge, as well as monitor the DI cartridge itself for exhaustion. The load being the in value, that is the TDS passed on to the cartridge after the membrane has rejected 96 to 98 percent and then detect exhaustion of the DI at which point the TDS would no longer read zero on the out. So the in gives us the load on the DI cartridge after the membrane's done its job and the out tells us if the DI cartridge is still fully functional. Let's look at the max gap. The max gap system has two dual TDS meters where the probes are installed first of all just before the membrane, which is the in position of the left side meter, just after the membrane, which is the out position of the left side meter, after the first DI, which is in on the right side meter, and after the second DI, which is out on the right side meter. Now the benefit here is an enhanced configuration giving you important data that you would need to properly set up and monitor your system's performance you gain visual cues for when maintenance is needed and general insight into changes in the quality of your source and product water. These four points the meters are measuring tells us a lot about how the unit is performing. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail, beginning with the left side meter here. The in position of the left side meter just before the membrane tells us the TDS in the tap water knowing this is important because we can use that number to calculate the rejection of the membrane. Remember, the rejection of the membrane is a static percentage provided there are no significant changes to pressure, temperature, or the condition of the membrane. So if this value goes up, then the out value of this meter will go up just after the membrane. Let's look at that position. That out position there tells us what TDS is left after the tap water is forced through the membrane. We use this along with the in value of the left side meter to calculate the rejection rate. See the FAQ page on our website where the calculator is located. The higher the number on this out of the left side meter, the more your first DI, that being the max cap, is going to have to work. So getting this number as low as possible yields longer life for your max cap cartridge. Now let's talk about the right side meter. The in on the right side meter tells us if there is any remaining TDS after the first DI cartridge, which is the max cap. This should always read zero unless it's about to become exhausted, at which point it will show one on the meter. Since the DI is no longer at full capacity, it'd be wise to change it. 
sooner rather than later uh, because the increase in TDS is only going to reduce the life of the second DI because that additional TDS gets passed on. Let's look at the out on this right side meter. The out on the right side meter should definitely always be zero since this is the water that exits the second DI which you intend to utilize for your aquarium. Replacing the first DI promptly ensures extra long life of the second DI. When the out on this meter no longer reads zero, it would be wise to replace the second DI cartridge. Couple tips here for you. First of all, these meters are not lab grade, whether it's the DM1 here or the DM2. So they may not be as sensitive as more costly devices. So use the given numbers as cues or relative indicators. It's really the relationship between the numbers and the system operation that's important. The COM100, now this is a meter that will give you more accurate readings if you desire. However, it's handheld, so it lacks the convenience of an inline meter. Replacing the batteries is something that uh, a lot of us also forget about. Uh, if the batteries are weak, which is indicated by the LCD appearing a bit dim, uh, the numbers could really be way off. So that's something that we also want to keep an eye out for. Um, so it's, in all in all, it's really important that you get familiar with the numbers on all four points or two points if it's the CSBDI, uh, so that you can identify changes that could affect either DI life or indicate membrane replacement. For instance, an example here would be if the TDS going into the membrane has been stable, say around 500, but then you notice an increase on the out, which is normally like 10, but now it's 20, there's no increase uh, on the in, obviously. It's the same. The pressure and the temperature is about the same. Then that could mean that your membrane needs to be replaced. So having that out reading, it really helps to tell you how the membrane's doing. Now, let's say you were to do nothing about that scenario and you have an increase in TDS now coming out of the membrane. Well, that increase in TDS is going to be passed on to the first DI cartridge, which would reduce the normal lifespan of that cartridge. So if you notice the lifespan was shorter than normal, then that could certainly explain why. So you gain a lot of insight by familiarizing yourself with all the numbers displayed on the meters, which in turn helps you avoid some of the common pitfalls, and that saves you money.